Hey, this is Rebecca Dirks for PremierGuitar.com. We are here with Jesse, Guitar Tech for Nick Zinner, checking out the Yeah Yeah Yeahs rig up here in Minneapolis. And uh, Nick's known for his pedals, and we've got quite a few here. So you want to start by uh, telling us basically the signal flow for these boards here. I can. I will run it down here from the top. The first of many pedals, a Deuce Tone Rat, which actually is two distortion pedals in one, and he kind of has them EQ'd separately in different ways. He uses that pedal a lot. What kind of are the two different overdrive tones he's going for? One's, one's darker and one's brighter, basically, and sometimes he has them both on at the same time. So uh, it's kind of uh, three flavors in one there. And then he goes into a delay pedal, from there into a Line 6 uh, MM4, which emulates lots of tremolos, and uh, he uses some phase shifter sounds in that too. From there into a Power Screamer, and from there into a Graphic Fuzz. Basically, Nick has a lot of delay pedals and a lot of different kinds of uh, boost or distortions, and so they're all kind of different flavors of a couple basic effects, but... What kind of delays is he using the DD7 for? Uh, that one he mostly uses for a real short slapback, but he also, because that one's the one delay that he fiddles with a lot, it's on his main pedal board, he'll go in there and sweep through to slow things down and, and kind of do these little uh, sample freeze type effects. Between songs, he'll make these little like kind of noisy soundscapes, and that's part of that. Uh, so from pedal board A, which is the first one there, we go on to a Digitech Whammy pedal which he uses uh, for octaves up and then also some octaves down, depending on the song. And then from there into the first of uh, two Line 6 delay pedals. So he uses the, uh, the delay pedals just as loopers, and he'll, he'll loop guitar parts on the fly all the time, and then he'll loop something on the first pedal, add some effects to it, loop it on the second pedal, and he'll have two very similar loops going on at the same time, which really makes a lot of, uh, a lot of sound, for sure. So from that first Line 6 looper pedal, we go into a Pog, which is basically just kind of a sub-octave down effect, which he started using because I didn't have a bass player. And then from there into another delay pedal, which is most of the time just a short slapback, and that's all there is to that. The, the flashback there? Mm-hmm. And then from there into another tuner, which we kind of, he'll, he'll use that to mute uh, the pedals if they're, and it's also a very handy tool when I come out here to fix a broken pedal in the middle of a show. I'll just step that on without making a whole lot of noise, uh, plugging and unplugging pedals. So from there we go to the pedal board C, I call it, the third pedal board, which has all three, I think there might even be more than three now, but three of the Eventide uh, pedals, which are mostly different types of delays, really. Uh, there's some pitch changing effects too in one of them. From there into another looper pedal, which is kind of the last stop before we get into uh, his amps. Did you mention the Digitech Jam Man? Okay, well there's two Jam Mans out here actually, and those have samples in them. Okay. And he actually doesn't use those uh, as part of the guitar chain. Although actually, believe it or not, the guitar does go through one of the jam ends because he uses these DL4s for looping, like an actual sample from one of the records or something like that. Because once again, without a bass player, he started making a lot of noise all by himself. And that was one of the things is, is having these sample pedals, which we'll see more of over here. Now, they are um, touring with the bass player yeah. right now, right? Yeah, and so he plays on a lot of their newer material. I'd say the last maybe two or three records kind of require some extra instrumentation and when they play their older songs he'll walk off stage. Okay, and, so Nick yeah. will still use the same kind of techniques yep. he developed when it was just the three of them. Um, can you talk at all about some of, are there certain settings on the Eventides that he he's uses a lot? Them and he, he's programmed and he kind of uses I'd say one sound in each pedal pretty much. He doesn't have a whole lot of banks of sound so kind of get one good sound on one pedal and use it for just that and pretty much leave it. And that's why he has three of those yeah. things. And are they, are they pretty, is that pretty much effects that are applied to the loops or is he using no, those? He'll use those on, there's certain songs that they're, I mean you'll see one of them has a note on it about turning it after because uh, yeah so there's there's just certain songs that he'll use that particular sound for and that's actually true for a lot of his pedals. Um, I mean he can play most of their material with just two or three pedals but there's certain songs over the years he's gotten a certain effect for and, and kind of prefers. So yeah, we do have a little Korg, uh, which he plays on, on a number of songs. There's also uh, Dave Pajo, who's playing bass, keyboards, and acoustic guitar. Plays a lot of the keyboard parts, but there's some ones on older songs that Nick 
got used to. In fact, you'll see him sometimes playing keyboards and guitar at the same time. <laughs> and the and the blue skies for the Korg. That's right. There's just a little delay pedal on the on the actual uh, keyboard, which he doesn't use for all the songs. But on to the last pedal board, which is actually just some sample pedals. Okay. So and a drum machine, which is uh, you can see they have this ancient uh, Zoom drum machine, which I've been desperately trying to replace. That's but the same one he's yeah. been using forever. Exactly. So they're attached. That's got some old songs in it that they can't really replicate with other uh, samplers. So that's an example of one of the loops that, that, that he'll, he'll trigger that himself. And it's pretty amazing the way he and Brian, the drummer, can like adjust off each other and never really sounds, you know, when he tr triggers drums in the middle of a song, it, it just locks right in somehow. This is another, this is a sample from one of their new songs. This is uh, Sacrilege, which is the first single off of their record. And it's actually a very long sample. It runs all the way through the song. Some of the ones he'll just have for a couple bars and he'll, he'll trigger them over and over again. But that's a rare sample that actually runs from the top of the song all the way through the end. So uh, how often, are, is our samples kind of going most of the show or just? Yeah, I would say maybe more in older songs, possibly. It depends. There's, if you really want the cheat sheet, yeah, there it is. Yeah, that it is a pretty... Sense out of that can. <laughs> those, are, those are all in Nick's notes, which I copied over for Pretty me. intense. <laughs> um, yeah, and so at the very end of all of the guitar pedal chain, we come up here. Well, I'll show you the... This is the last stop in guitar land, which is a TC Electronics booster pedal, which is on all the time. And that actually goes into an old uh, Roland Space Echo, which is also on all the time, pretty much cranked up. And it's another gain stage, really. And from there, it goes into a splitter and splits into uh, three different amplifiers right now. He used to have as many as uh, four amps on stage. But he has a Fender Deluxe DeVille, which is voiced kind of dark, a 410 DeVille, which is voiced a little brighter. And then behind this whole pile of amplifiers, we've got a little Ampeg bass amp, which is basically just a subwoofer. And you really hear that when he steps on the pog and some of the octave effects. But that's that's how he got into making a big sound for just no bass player. Kind right, of. And is then this having twin, the amps set in different ways. Yeah, this twin, sorry, I think you were gonna ask about this twin. That's just samples and drum machines. And they started using that on stage before they had monitors and stuff like that. So. Part of it's for Brian, the drummer's benefit. He can hear some of the samples coming out of the back of the amp and also for the, the stage, but we try to keep it pretty quiet. Is it set sideways for any reason other than space? We're, yeah, we're cramped here. This is an abbreviated version of what it usually spreads out about four more feet. But. So with bringing the uh, vintage space echo on the road, has he looked into the RE20 pedal well, version or is he just is, attached to this? One of, one of the little secrets on this stage maybe is it's not, the tape is broken. It's not actually, he doesn't use the delay. It's just a gain stage, yeah, it's, which is a little interesting, but yeah. <laughs> I've tried to convince him to do something other and he's attached to that, you know, for Well, I guess it's, it's easier to keep it up if the tape's already yeah. broken. It's nice. You have and to worry about that. that. Yeah. A pretty cool part of Nick's rig and a very important one because Nick's had this guitar since he was 14. It was his first guitar. And this is the guitar he plays still for probably, I don't know, certainly 80% of the older material and maybe half of the new material, so it's on stage most of the night. And he hasn't really found anything else that does the same thing. He does a lot of palm tremolo effects with this. Uh, there's no bar in it, you can see, but he does it all with his palm, yeah. Is, and that, is that the stock bridge? Yeah, this is actually kind of a weird Japanese-made uh, Strat from the 80s, and it has a sort of heavy metal, uh, I think it's a maybe shallower made bridge, I'm not sure, Floyd Rose style. And the locking the nut lock. no longer locks, but <laughs> but yeah. So those those are all stock parts, just mm -hmm. uh, disassembled slightly here and there. Yeah, well, it's it's yeah. I think a friend put a pickup in which he uses occasionally, and the neck is new. You but know what that is? That, it's all stock. I, I don't know. He it, what, teenage friend of his put it in oh, there. Oh, this is back back in the exactly. fourteen year old days. Exactly, and it has jumbo frets, so it was kind of a kind of a shredder's guitar back when it was made. Okay, you want to tell me what you're going to put so this together? Is, this is no pedals. This is pretty much just mix. Explosion a little distortion. So those are just a variety of different gain stages that he would have. And here's a little delay. And that's kind 
kind of a typical loop. Um, so that's really, that's a, a, a bulk of it, is different distortions, delays, some looping. Here's a little pod. And yeah, that, here's some fancy sounding delays. So that covers a lot of the pedals there. All right. Of course, Nick does it a lot better than I do. <laughs> All right, so now, Nick, you're going to tell us about our, your guitars. What do you have here? Uh, this is a guitar that Johnny Marr gave me um, just a few months ago. Uh, it's his, his Jaguar model. Um, so I don't know very much about it, but it plays great and sounds fantastic. So. Are you playing that a lot in the show? Uh, I've been using it just on, on one song because I keep it in standard tuning um, uh, and I'm using a bunch of different tunings for different guitars. But this is your standard? Yeah. Um, this is a, a guitar I, I also just got maybe like eight months ago. I think it's a 1963 or 64 Jaguar. Um, so I've always wanted a Jaguar and now I suddenly have two. So <laughs> it's nice. Um, did you tape that? I did, yeah. I just had to mark where it sounds good. This one is in standard too. Okay. Basically, I really wanted a Jaguar because my favorite guitar player, um, Roland Howard, uh, Roland S. Howard, played a Jaguar, and the always sounded amazing. So. Yes, now I got them. Yeah. Um, this is the second uh, custom first act guitar that these guys made for me a while ago. Uh, I think this is in like 2005 or 2006. Um, that sort of based on the, the an earlier model that they had made for me, but just lighter and with two instead of three um, pickups, but still with a Bigsby. And I think it's it's a lighter wood, um, but also in standard tuning. And does it have a fuzz built in? It does. It does. But I actually have that deactivated right now. So. You, you have enough <laughs> fuzz options yeah, on the floor, yeah, I guess. Exactly. Um, and what's, uh, what's the tuning for this one? Uh, standard. Also... Usually. You just need it when you're going for the semi-hollow thing. Yeah, it's just different songs um, suit different guitars, essentially. What kind of songs do you go for with this one versus the uh, the others? Uh, usually, if it if it's kind of like a needs like a thicker sort of rockier sound, then I'll go for for this one. Um, uh, something that usually I'll use the Jaguars for like songs that are lighter. Um, or have like lighter parts, essentially. Yeah, this is pretty much the main gay as guitar. I got this when I was in fifth, fifth or sixth grade. I think I traded my best friend Scott a bunch of comic books for this guitar. So I pretty much used it. Um, it's on all the AS records and EPs. This is the main one you use on stage then too. Yeah, for for um, for songs that that uh, it's for but it, it turns out to be like s maybe 70 percent or 60 percent of of uh of our songs uh, it's like a japanese yeah it's a weird japanese copy and of like, like 80s or something stickers. yeah probably 80s this is like a sticker of karen from that we made like right before yeah as i think this is a sticker of my old band challenge of the future that's ginger spice <laughs> um these are also stickers from my my old band and these are stickers from Indonesia that I got in Indonesia. On tour? Uh, Pre-tour. Uh. Pre-tour. And uh, with that one, he says you do also do uh, yeah, vibrato that way? Yeah, it used to have this kind of like heavy metal, like locking yeah. tremolo thing. Um, but that, I, I guess I took all that off over the years. Um, but yeah, I can use it to bend up or down. So that's the one that that you're using um, on Heads Will Roll. Yes, yes, and like maps and kind of, I don't know, all those symbols. It's a bass maybe, last bass. but not least. Right. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know very much about this bass. So, you, so, so what do you play bass on? I, pl I just play bass on um, a song called Under the Earth from our new record. Um, 
somebody else playing guitar, or is it just bass on no, that there's one? No, there's no guitar on the track, so I just play bass on it. So you have the Jaguars and the first act in standard. Is the Strat in a different tuning then? Yeah, Strat's in an open tuning okay. that I've used for forever. Do you, so. Are so those just the two tunings that you're using, or do you re yeah, retune I mean, that one? There's some, like, there's a song Y Control uses a different kind of modified tuning of the open tuning. Um, but essentially it's just just those tunings. So do you do that on the spot with the main strat or do you have another guitar for that one? Uh, we have a we have a backup strat too. This is just a yeah it was a backup guitar that was purchased for the last tour cycle because uh, for a long time Nick was just buying those Chinese Squires that are like $99 and they were getting smashed and uh, I finally convinced him to get something sort of in between. <laughs> so this is this is uh, withstood a couple smashings, as you can see here. There's some missing paint, and I think I had to change a tuner once, but uh, it's been it's just a backup spare one for when he breaks a string. On his main guitar doesn't get much use. So uh, with the guitars, uh, what string gauges are you using? Elevens, uh, I think. Tens, mostly elevens. Do you have a preference for picks? Uh, it doesn't matter. Usually, like medium or heavy. I'm not too specific not with too specific. that. You want to talk a little bit about how, kind of how you go about putting together your pedal combinations and loops, yeah. and what some of your favorites are for a certain song. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of one of these things that keeps growing and growing, um, like with every record and tour. Uh, I try to keep it to a minimum, but unfortunately, just like like trying to reproduce some things from recordings um, ended up having to get a lot of pedals um, that are just being used for specific songs um, and specific sections of songs. Um, so I have way too many pedals on stage, but it's fun to play around with. And with the, uh, you obviously you use the DL4s for a lot yeah. of the looping parts. Uh, yeah. What is it about that particular unit that you find so useful? Um, they're just like extremely intuitive um, looping pedals, and I like pitching them and reversing them, and also uh, kind of making making a sound on one and then um, or building up a loop on one and then moving it over to another loop, to another pedal, and then uh, like building up again on the first one. Loop so within kinda, a loop. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. That stuff is fun. Um, and what are you using the MM MM4 for? Um, that one is just for, uh, has, I have a preset for four different, um, four different effects for different songs. I think it's like vibrato and tremolo and uh, phaser and flanger, so. And he was saying that you tend to, you, for most of the pedals like those are the even tides, you've got a couple presets in them and just stick with those. Oh, for the even tides? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just use the presets and just tweak them a little bit. Um, and yeah, pretty much stick with with what's already in there. I, I really try to make things as simple as possible. I'm not I'm not that much of a of a gearhead, but um, um, everybody with all the everybody with all the pedals always says they're not gearheads. I know. It's, yeah, it's funny how things turn out that way. You're a sound head or a noise head, am, but not I'm, a gearhead. Yeah, I'm a sound head, but but I don't specifically know like the intricacies of of how everything works. It's just sort of what works for me and what's been working for us um, live. So, do you feel you have any more um, freedom on some of the songs where you have a bass player to do more with the guitar, or is it like harder because? No, no, no. It's much. It's much easier. I mean, the whole reason is because like I couldn't do enough. Like there weren't enough pedals to to do that and still have it sound, uh, you know, be human. Um, so I have a lot. Yeah, a lot more flexibility um, this way. And you've had you've had touring guitarists in the past, but you have a touring bassist now. Is it? Is there? It's you the feel same. like having? No, it's. I mean, he's he's playing acoustic guitar and and bass and also doing like keyboard sample stuff. Okay, so you've got you've got the uh, RE two o it's two o one right yeah. out there, um, which the tape's broken. And why do you like it? So the tape much? is broken. Uh, yeah, the tape broke like seven or eight years ago, but I never really used it um, as a delay unit. Uh, but it's it's like a great compressor and kind of preamp, um, actually. So that's what I that's what I use it for, um, and it, yeah, it's just kind of naturally compress compresses uh, 
you know, all the range of kind of sounds and inputs that are going into it, and uh, it just sounds great. What's the latest addition to your rig then? I think the newest one is is not actually that that new, but the Eventide Space Pedal. Um, I've been loving that one a lot. We use it a lot on the record, so. Um, what are kind of some of the presets you or the sounds that you tend to go to on the space? Um, patch number 17. Patch number 17. <laughs> I don't know. I just keep it at that and play awesome. play around with it. And do so you use that on the new record a lot too? Yeah, it's all over. The, it's all over the record. And are those boards and this setup kind of the a lot of stuff that you use on the records or? No, I try. I try not to use any of the stuff on the record actually. But um, like every time we go to record, I like have all that shit sent down, and then I just try to like start from fresh. Um, but you know, kind of like gradually, like one thing or two things gets pulled from it, um, or I have to recreate something using that. Um, but I try, I try to always like have it be different every time we do stuff. Um, but yeah. And uh, with the with the samplers, that you're using a lot of samples. How are you putting those together? Is it? He said there's uh, Jesse said there's some bits from the records and yeah, other things. Yeah, those are all those are all from from like very specific. Uh, like sounds and parts from songs that um, that uh, I'm triggering throughout the song. They're usually short, um, like 20 or 30 second bits, um, but just so we can have uh, sort of keep alive a live um, feel to songs without just having it be on some like Pro Tools rig or whatever, like just going. So like Brian's playing on it. Brian's playing to a, a click. Um, with songs where those are used, and then I'm just like triggering different parts, uh, like di different samples throughout the song from different pedals. Is with him playing to a click, does that make it easier for you to use like the drum machine parts with fit that in together? Yeah, yeah, but so, but so yeah, so there is a consistency, but it's not like you know, there's there's still like uh, a lot, still a little natural, you know, yeah, there's still exactly, exactly. Very cool. Well, thank you very much for taking some time to talk about your egg with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. This is Rebecca Dirks for PremierGuitar.com.